Awesome. Well, first off, thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited for uh, for this particular for this particular topic. Uh, these are our live with astronomer series. Uh, they're meant to be short, digestible, uh, practitioner driven little tutorials to kind of talk about how you actually do something in Airflow or how a concept works. Um, just a couple of quick uh, logistics notes. Uh, the webinar, as well as all of the content Tenton is going to go through, will be sent over to you afterwards. So please be, uh, be on the lookout for something in your inbox. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A. We'll try to get some of them right after the content. Um, and please also uh, feel free to suggest topics for us, right? Uh, we're nearing the end of the year. We have a couple of things planned out for the rest of the year, but we'd love to start getting a sense of what the community wants for, uh, for 2023, uh, which is kind of crazy to say out loud that we're closer or how close we are to it <laughs> but uh what's it called with that said kenton i will hand the mic to you to introduce yourself and uh let's get started yeah awesome thanks we were talking about january last week and it was particularly jarring so um but definitely excited for upcoming topics so yeah, thanks for joining everybody. I'm Kenton Danis, Lead Developer Advocate at Astronomer. And today in our live, uh, we're going to do a short deep dive into data aware scheduling. I uh, just saw a question in the chat asking whether data aware and data driven are the same thing. Yes, um, I definitely am guilty of using those terms interchangeably. Um, Airflow open source is using data aware mostly, but we're talking about the same thing here. So. Um, this is a new feature in Airflow 2.4 uh, that was just released uh, a couple of weeks ago in mid-September, so we're super excited about it and uh, love to see the interest in the community. So with that, we will go ahead and dive right in get on the right screen here. Here we go. Um, not going to go through too many slides today. Uh, we like to keep these live super hands-on and kind of coding focused, so most of uh, the talk is going to be about how you can actually implement um, data aware scheduling in your Airflow DAGs, but since this is a brand new feature, I want to just give everybody a high level overview of what it is. Um, so Airflow 2.4 introduced this new concept of data sets within Airflow. Um, this means DAGs which use data sets and access the same data will have explicit visible relationships and you can use those data sets to schedule uh, your DAGs. So that's why we call it data aware scheduling. Um, this is particularly helpful for use cases where you have, you know, different DAGs with dependencies, or we'll talk a little bit about breaking up, you know, monolithic DAGs into smaller ones so that each team can manage their own stuff. So you might have lots of cases where, you know, some team is working with a DAG that does something to data, maybe it's training a model for a data science team, maybe it's building reports for an analytics team, and obviously they want to do that on data that's up to date. So you might have another DAG uh, that's actually publishing that data or creating that data, uh, moving it from somewhere else, uh, and you don't want to run you know, your DAG that uses that data until the data is up to date. So that's what data sets are going to allow you to do. Uh, again, I'm going to jump right into uh, showing how to implement this. Um, so data sets, again, do require you to be on Airflow 2.4. Uh, so I'm going to show the code here, and then we'll run a couple of these in the Airflow UI and see what it looks like. Um, uh, again, for Airflow 2.4, if you're not already on it um, and you want to try it out, a great way to do that is using the Astronomer CLI. We'll send some uh, links out for how to get started with it. Uh, if you create a new project, you'll are automatically be on Airflow 2.4, uh, or if you're already working with one, you can update uh, Astronomer Runtime version 6.0 is based on Airflow 2.4. So that's what you'll want to look at, look for there. Uh, once you're on 2.4, uh, you have everything you need to get started with data sets. Um, with data sets, you have two kind of new concepts. Um, you have the concept of a producer task and a consumer DAG. So we're going to look at producer tasks first. Um, these are the tasks that update your data sets. Um, so any task that uh, you want to be complete before that data set is considered updated or complete, or however you want to think about that. Um, I'll note that with Airflow 2.4 right now, um, it is up to the DAG author to say which tasks update a data set. Um, so as you'll see in this example, Airflow is not actually aware of what the data is in the data set. Um, so you could put you know, a data set on it. You could define any task to be a producer task. 
the way you do this is you're going to import uh, the data set class um, that's just from the core or flow package. You're then going to define your data set using a URI. Um, so uh, you can see here I have an S3 URI. Again, note that right now um, Airflow is going to interpret this just as a string. So Airflow is not actually connecting to S3 for this data set. It's not aware of what this data actually is. Um, this is just how you identify it. Um, the URI is sort of leaving open future uh, possibilities for future work. So it's great to get in the habit of using that now. Um, but note that you could put any valid URI in here, including like my data set or ABC or something like that. So you define your data set and then to indicate a producer task. So again, that's a task that updates my data set within any task. You can uh, define this outlets parameter and then the name of your data set. Um, you might do this in multiple different DAGs. So this is my data sets upstream one. I also have data sets upstream two. I'm going to do the same thing in this DAG so that this is the same. Um, same syntax here, but a different data set name, output two. Um, be careful how you name them because, again, if they're different and you need them to be the same, Airflow will treat them as different. Um, if you make them the same, Airflow will treat them as the same. So careful there. Um, and then in this case, I put my outlet of DAG2 data set on both of my tasks. Um, one of them sleeps for five seconds, the other sleeps for 30. Um, obviously, again, you'll note in this example, these are bash operators that are sleeping. They're not doing anything to any data. Um, it's on me as the DAG author to tell Airflow, these are the tasks that I want to listen for. So that's the producing tasks part. Then the consumer DAG piece, which is the scheduling piece, is I have a downstream quote DAG that I want to run only when certain data sets have been updated. So to do that, I'm going to do a very similar thing here. I'm going to import uh, data set class. I'm going to define the data sets that I want to schedule on. Um, in this case, I'm doing two of them. So I define them both here. Note you have to define these in every DAG that you're working with. So again, that's why I say be careful of what you're naming them and that you're consistent where you need to be. And then you can simply provide them to the schedule parameter. Um, uh, in this particular case, I'm using two data sets. Uh, this works as an all sort of functionality. So any data sets in this list that I provide there, all of them must be updated for the DAG to run. Um, you don't have to have multiple. This is just for this example. It could be just one here. Um, so let's hop over to the Airflow UI and check out what this looks like here. Um, so here are my DAGs, uh, my produce DAGs with producer tasks, data set upstream one and data set upstream two. Those look just like normal. Here's my consumer DAG that I scheduled on those data sets. And you'll notice that here it's schedule says data set. Um, it also says under next run instead of a time based schedule, this uh, indicates that one of two data sets have been updated. Um, so this means it's currently waiting for uh, something to run. If I go ahead and run both of my, oops. Try that again. Let's run data set upstream one. That looks better. And we'll also run data set upstream two. You can see these are both running. And as soon as they complete, we're going to notice our data set downstream one, two. There it goes, starts to run. So both of those data sets were updated and I went ahead and ran my consumer DAG. Now there's a couple of things I wanna point out here. Uh, the first is that you'll actually notice that this data set upstream two is still running. It still has a running task, uh, but my consumer DAG already ran. Um, that's because my data set upstream two, you'll remember I had one of my bash tasks, tasks sleeps for 30 seconds. So it's still going. Um, this data set, DAG2 data set is updated by both task one and task two. Uh, with data sets in 2.4, Airflow is only going to look for the first update to that data set. So that obviously happens in task one because this one runs faster. 
So as soon as this is done, that's enough to check that box and go ahead and run the consumer DAG. It does not matter if you have other tasks either in the same DAG or a different DAG that also update that data set. So depending on the behavior you want, uh, you have to be a little careful again about how you define those producer tasks. Uh, the other new kind of feature with this that I'll point out here is the data sets tab. Um, so this is going to show me kind of a visual representation of the data sets in my Airflow environment and the um, uh, and their dependencies. So this is a great visual way of looking um, at uh, how your data sets are interacting and how you've scheduled things. Uh, showing again, it'll show both the data sets and the tasks um, or your DAGs, excuse me, that are that update them and are scheduled on them, uh, as well as you get an extra task instance history here. So that can be very useful for figuring out what's going on. Cool. So uh, I'll pause there if there are any questions so far on data sets. One more thing to go through after that. Anton, I think um, just one question that jumped up was, can you just explain again when a data set that is, when a DAG that is supposed to be triggered by data sets, like when will it run? Um, when all the data sets are updated, when just one? Can you just go through that one more time? Yeah, yeah, great question. So it will run when all of the data sets that it is scheduled on have been updated once. Um, so when you schedule, like in this case with two different data sets, this is an all, you don't have an option yet for like any um, or some functionality like that, that'll be coming in a uh, future Airflow version. Um, for now, this is everything in here has to be updated, but it only has to be updated once. And there is, a, we'll link to it as well, but in the Airflow documentation, there's a neat little graphic that kind of highlights how that works. Um, so in a particular scenario, when your DAG would run, that's kind of helpful for understanding that. Yeah, great question. Um, Cool. So then lastly, um, we've kind of gone through the functionality. I just want to highlight um, the benefits of data sets and using this new feature. Um, again, I mentioned before, this will allow you to create smaller DAGs instead of monolithic ones because you have a really easy, visible way of implementing those dependencies. Um, this can allow each team to maintain their own DAGs, even if data is shared across them. Um, in some use cases, data sets can replace the external task sensor or trigger DAG run operator, which are other methods of implementing cross DAG dependencies, but they don't give you as much visibility. Um, and because, at least in the case of the external task sensor, you have a sensor running, you're consuming resources, so data sets can be more efficient. Um, and then you have that increased visibility into those DAG dependencies. Um, I will, we will be sending out um, all of this in the recap. So um, no worries about copying these links or anything now, but we do have additional resources that uh, talk about how to implement data sets, um, both written and uh, also have a webinar uh, that we did last week that talks about this as well as all of the other new Airflow 2.4 features, anybody who's interested. Um, Cool. And yeah, for those that joined us live, um, we have another couple of minutes in case there are any additional questions. Awesome. A ton of questions coming up, Kenton. So I'm just going to try to feed them to you one by one. Cool. Um, so as far as the different trigger rules go that you can traditionally use to kind of trigger tasks, are those available in data sets yet? Or is that coming in the future? Yeah, great question. So right now, data sets can only be used to trigger a DAG. Um, not You can't trigger individual tasks with a data set, um, but you can still implement all of the normal trigger rules within a DAG. Uh, so if you need to do things kind of like branching and running certain parts of your DAG at different times, you may have to still use something like the external task sensor or some combination of that and data sets. Um, Kind of depends on your use case, but you can definitely get creative there. Um, Prasenjit has a question, and I think it would just be easier if I answered this because number one, I actually know the answer, and number two, um, I'm not going to be able to read it properly. <laughs> sure. So, Prasenjit, I think uh, what you're kind of asking is if I have some sort of source, so if I have some data somewhere, 
that Airflow is responsible for and data gets updated there, can that kick off a task um, or kick off, kick off the DAG or anything of the sort? And as far as that goes, that's definitely the direction we want to take things, but that's not what this is right now. This is really for data sets that are managed by DAGs that other DAGs have to depend on. Um, as of right now, I would say it's like a foundational release to build more towards what you're asking about. Um, but I love where your head's at. That's exactly where, where we're going. Um, then a question from Anonymous is, data set information stored in the Airflow Metastore. Uh, sorry, can you say that again? So is there data set information that's stored in the Airflow backend DB? Um, so yes, I'm, I'm hesitating because I'm, I'm not totally sure what the question is getting at. Like, yes, there is part of the release, like how Airflow actually manages the data sets and listening for tasks. Um, there are definitely new tables in the Airflow Metastore that manage all of that information. Um, it's not something that you as the user would need to worry about. Um, mm -hmm. And so any data sets that you have registered, like those URIs, um, I don't know if that's why you're asking, those definitely are stored um, at points in the metadata store. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is related to the question at all, but don't put any sensitive information in those URIs. Um, at least for right now, uh, they're not actually connecting any to anything, so you shouldn't need to. But that's a best practice there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, you know the data set itself is not in the Airflow DB, right? It's still somewhere external. And right now, the schema for data set is very light. As we were saying, this is kind of foundational there. As we build more here, there'll definitely be more metadata about the data set stored in the Airflow DB, but it's never actually going to store anything more than metadata. Correct. Right. Cool. Um, Sandeep, I think your question also uh, is a version of the two questions beforehand. So as of right now, these data sets can be used instead of the external task sensor and can be used for visibility between your DAGs. As far as how it's going to be implemented in the future <clears throat> around kind of what the grand vision is, um, I think we're both the wrong people to be answering that question. I think there's a lot of stuff in AIP 47. If you were to look for that on the Airflow, um, on the Airflow wiki, uh, you might find some information there. But I think a lot of that is still being worked out. Um, but if you have a use case that you think would be relevant towards this, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, for sure. I would love to promise things for the airflow <laughs> working on airflow to work on, but I'm not sure they would be pleased with that. <laughs> Webinar driven product development. I love it. <laughs> uh, um, awesome. I think that's all the questions that we had. Uh, thank you all so much for joining. We really appreciate that. And like I said, like this is a super foundational release and we think there's a lot of stuff coming from it. So if you have ideas, please reach out to us. Um, all righty. Um, we will see you all next week. Um, talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.